um, I played, uh, started playing rugby, um, went to the RGS, the Royal Grammar School. Um, I started playing rugby at Tyndale Senior Rugby. Um, then moved to West Hartlepool for three seasons, uh, playing National 1 and Premiership. Uh, then I moved to Leeds for six seasons, um, playing a mixture of National 1 and Premiership, and then Sedgley Park. Um, and lately I've just been player coach at Percy Park for the last three years. Uh, which I thoroughly enjoyed, and then I've uh, been given the opportunity to uh, come on board at the Falcons and uh, and coach the academy, which is uh, fantastic. Really looking forward to it. Um, I, I'm pretty sort of traditional on my values. I think rugby is a very simple game, um, and sort of uh, will be practicing the basics uh, very well, so they can do those extremely well. Um, the sort of discipline and honesty of players as well um, is something that will be uh, instilled into the players. Um, also, be looking to sort of training has got to be hard for me. So, train hard, fight easy was once uh, spoken to me or said to me, and I, I very much uh, train along those sort of lines as well. And what style of rugby do you like to play? And I what will you be encouraging? I think that's a that's a tricky question. Uh, I mean, I enjoy a, a nice open game of rugby, but uh, nowadays uh, things get so structured um, that it, it almost inhibits that sometimes. Um, I think there's 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 time for structure and there's time um, for players to be able to, to look up and see see the spaces and play play in front and play what they see. Um, so it's it's having a good balance, and it's it's uh, coaching players to be able to to be able to recognise the different situations and play to these. The Falcons, the club, has a rich tradition in producing you know good young talent who unfortunately have moved on to to other clubs. I mean, what will will you and Marco be doing, and especially the club, be doing to keep hold of these players? Yeah, it's it, it's fantastic to look at the players it's produced. Just unfortunately, it hasn't been able to hold on to them. Um, Mark and I have uh, spoken quite a bit about this, and also with uh, with Seymour, um, and we're going to try and create a sort of loyalty towards the club with these youngsters by by almost creating a club within a club, so that they'll actually come here and they'll play uh, a full sort of fixture list. Um, we're not sure at what age groups we're going to do this, um, so there'll be an actual Falcons junior team. Um, and then a Falcons Academy team as well. And these guys will will play in a Falcons shirt, and it won't just be three or four games a season. It'll be it'll be more than that. And they'll actually know people around the club, know the first team players, and they'll actually become part of the club. And I know it's early days. I mean, what changes do you expect to see over the next six months? Um, I think we need to get more players. Uh, junior players into the club. Um, we need to see more people as as academy. As an academy, we need not to be rebranded, but we need to get back out in the community and realise, uh, or, or let people know that we're out there watching and looking and actively looking for talent. So we're going to watch games. We're we're talking to schools. We're talking to clubs, and we're actually uh, we're we're finding out about people and the best players in the region and within Cumbria and Northumberland. And these and these strong links with local community, you know, especially the local clubs and schools, are very important to you. Yeah, just just being a local lad. I mean, I would love to play for the Falcons, um, and and that's something that I think uh, maybe has got lost a little bit. We need to create something, or or create, a, I don't know, product's probably the wrong word, but we need to we need to instill in these youngsters that the that the best thing to do is to be playing for for their hometown, the home city. Um, so if you speak to a junior rugby player in Northumberland, Durham or Cumbria, they want to play for the Falcons. They don't want to go down to Wasps or Harlequins or anyway, they want to be playing for the Falcons. There is there's a lot of good talent around the region and it just needs to be picked up maybe a little bit earlier and sort of just encouraged and helped along the way. Um, and from early discussions with Seymour Curdy, the owner of the club, um, I mean, has his ambition really excited you? It it is it really is uh, nice to see he's uh, he's he wants the academy um, to to flourish really so he's sort of given uh, Mark and I um, 
a lot of encouragement um, and he's given us a lot of free reign to, to try and sort things out and there's, there's uh, things available for us to, to take the academy forward which is brilliant he's very very behind it, very positive with the academy, it's brilliant. At Lancaster at, um, at Leeds I worked in the academy with him um, and he, he was very much um, yeah, he did. He did. He was autocratic at times, but then he could talk to the players and ask the players their opinions and things like that. And he was his man management was excellent. His his communication skills were good. So I've learned a lot off uh, off these people. There's another lad that I worked under called Tim Free, a South African, at Sedgley Park, and just his enthusiasm and and sort of passion for rugby I've never come across before. And that was something that I really, really. Uh, it's really quite inspiring to, to, to be coached or spoken. He hasn't got the best man management skills, but uh, just his enthusiasm for the game was, was brilliant to see. You know? So hopefully I'll, I've got a bit of everything moulded all into one, you know, and then I'll bring my own my own to it as well. Um, so, so Mark, I mean, you must be pleased to have James on board. Oh, definitely. It's been a, a long process and, uh, and yeah, glad that he's, he's now, now at the club and he's started uh, sort of getting other people who he's going to be working with and, uh, and hopefully we can start to move things forward over the next, over the next few months and start to sort of really sow the seeds. And what sort of role will he play in terms of, of what you're doing at the club? Um, we, we, obviously we need to iron out some of the finer details between ourselves but primarily I think my role will, will be more strategic management, off field, behind the scenes, um, mm -hmm. looking after the player pathway etc etc whereas his role as head coach will will be to sort of look after the players' best interests um, and really sort of take a lead on any playing program stuff, so any team games we've got, plus uh, plus the actual coaching side of things and the and the delivery. And it's been here two days. I mean, what are your first impressions of your working relationship with James? I mean, he's very easy to get on with, and uh, and I knew a bit about him from the past, obviously when he played at West Hartpool, which was which was my old club as well. Yeah. Um, and I knew that obviously he comes from a good pedigree, hard worker. Um, always put his body on the line as a player, um, and that sort of comes through in his personality as well. So, he, 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 I know for a fact that he'll give his all. Um, and yeah, I think the first first couple of days, I think it's it's more about him getting settled into things than 